Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com. In this video, we're going to compare Android Jelly Bean on the Galaxy Nexus with iOS 6 on the iPhone 5. Let's get to it. So we're going to cover six different areas in this comparison video. We're going to cover home screens, notifications, app stores, cloud services, built-in apps, and voice services. Obviously these are two very different platforms and they've changed and evolved little by little over time and today they have grown kind of even further apart and yet in some ways they've grown closer together like in notifications. So let's start off by unlocking both devices and what you're going to notice right off the bat is that here on the Galaxy Nexus I have no unlock screen. You have that choice in Android. You can have slide to unlock, you can have pin unlock, pattern unlock, face unlock, or no unlock at all, or you can get a third-party app that allows you to overtake uh, the built-in unlock screen, really have it customized however you want. In iOS 6, all you can do is have a slide to unlock or a pin unlock. Some might care, some might not, it's just a lock screen, just pointing out the differences here. So one of the hallmarks of Android has always been its customizability in terms of widgets on the home screen, whereas iOS 6 and iOS 5 and iOS 4 and 3 and 2 and 1 have always been about icons. Although in a previous generation of iOS, iOS 5, Apple added two widgets to the notification chain. We're going to talk about that in a second. So of course in Android, you know this, you can take uh, a wide variety of widgets, thousands of widgets that you can download, you can customize them, you can resize them and they can provide real life functionality on your home screens so that you don't always have to go in and out of apps which is what you have to do uh, in iOS. So of course in iOS and Android just like you've been able to do for a while you can create folders although folders open a lot faster uh, in Android. So for example if we make a new folder here look at the difference. Here in Android they open instantly iOS you get that fancy animation whether you want it or not. Okay, so that's home screens. That's been the same story for a while now. Something that's changed to iOS 6 and Jelly Bean is the notification shade. One of the strengths of Android has always been this notification center or notification shade. They really never came up with a brilliant name for it, where you can pull down and you can see a lot of information at your fingertips. And in Ice Cream Sandwich, they added the ability to swipe off individual notifications. And in Jelly Bean, they added sort of live notifications. And so if you have a missed call, it will say call back. If you've got some email messages, you can sort of see mini previews right on the screen here, which really adds a lot of usability to your notification shade. And of course, you can clear all your notifications with one press. In iOS 6, now you have some new options in the notification shade. You can tap to tweet or tap to add a Facebook post, which is a really great idea if you're really busy on social networks. There's Two new widgets, well, they're not really new for iOS 6. They've been there since iOS 5, weather and stocks. That's the only two widgets you can add. Uh, the world has been crying and calling out for developers to be able to tap into this because how cool would it be if you could have, um, say, a words with friends widget or, or think of your favorite app showing live information up there. Uh, speaking of words with friends, it looks like it's my move. And this is how iOS 6 does notifications. You cannot swipe them off the screen. If you tap on them, you will go right into that area and it will disappear if you action on it. The trouble is with the notifications in iOS 6 is that if you have four mail messages and you want to only swipe away two of them, you cannot do that. It's all or nothing. You hit the X, this tiny X, which is impossible to hear, you hit, you hit it twice and then it moves off the screen. So notifications are still superior in Android. In fact, I spend a lot of time in the notification shade in Android just because it's kind of this real center hub that acts on my terms and kind of acts as a rolling to-do list uh, for what I need to action on. Next thing I want to talk about here is the App Store. So we're going to go to the Play Store and over here in the iOS App Store. And one thing that Apple does differently compared to Android is that Apple has different stores. This is the App Store. If you want to go to uh, the iTunes Store, that's a completely different place to go. You go into here. This is where you go for your books and for your movies. Uh, well, actually, that's where you go for your movies and for your TV shows and music. And then if you want to download a book, an iBook or, or a newspaper, you go into Newsstand, yet another store. So really lots of different places and you could say that this is actually part of the main store but that's not apparent. In Android, brilliantly, Google has put everything under one roof. Apps, music, magazines, movies and TVs, shows and books. Everything is within one, one spot. 
New for iOS 6 is a redesigned app store, and let's compare the search experience. We're going to go over here to search and search, and we are going to type Facebook. We're just start typing face. Let's compare the, the search experiences. So here in Jelly Bean, the second result is the actual Facebook match. So you can go directly towards that, or you can go into search results. Over here on the iPhone, uh, you hit Facebook and it takes you to the search results. And you can only see, now in iOS 6, you can only see one item at a time. So if you get a, a so if you get results with 75 apps, you're going to be swiping a lot. As you can see, there are 7,311 apps here that I have to scroll through to see them. There's no way to change the display. But if we were to go to the basic Facebook search results here, you just scroll down the screen, scroll down, and just flip through. But some may say that now in iOS 6, when you actually tap on uh, the app, it's a, an improved user interface. So we've got these nice little screenshots here. Everything seems to be colored differently. Uh, there's gray backgrounds and white backgrounds and different tabs here. Just a really nice display, a really spruced up app store in iOS 6. Although I gotta say that the Google Play Store is faster, especially to find things because everything's under one roof and it seems to be just easier to navigate, especially if you're searching through a lot of applications. Okay, so now let's talk about cloud services. This is idea of storing things in the cloud so you don't always have to back them up and so that things are synchronized across multiple devices. iCloud has expanded in iOS 6. As you can see, these are all the things you can synchronize. Uh, documents and photos, photo stream, of course, the basic mail, context, calendar, reminders, things that you've been able to do on Android, but they've add, added things like notes, passbook, uh, and of course you can do a backup right from your device every day. Uh, now in Android, there's not that much flexibility in terms of cloud options offered by Google, but there's a third party app to do everything. For example, you can get Dropbox to act like PhotoStream. So you take a picture on your Galaxy Nexus or any Android phone that you might be using and it will go into the Dropbox cloud. It'll show up on your, your Android tablet, on your PC, on your Mac, whatever you have. It's the same exact thing. Or Notes, there's Evernotes for, uh, for Android. It does the exact same thing as Notes here, but some might say in an even more powerful way. So in Android, it's kind of plug and play. You, you have to download different apps to do different things. And those particular third-party apps might very well be more powerful than what you get in iCloud. But the great thing about iCloud is that everything is here. Everything works very well. Sometimes there's an outage, but Apple's done a great job with making iCloud a one-stop solution for backing up your data and keeping it synchronized across multiple devices. Okay, now let's talk about web browsers. Of course, on both of these devices, you can get third-party web browsers like Opera, like Chrome, but let's just talk about the built-in stock browsers. So let's open them at the same time. Open a little bit faster here in iOS 6. And from here, you get a very similar experience at the end of the day. You've got a tabs button. Here's a tabs button down here. You open up your bookmarks kind of with an extra press. You press uh, the three dots and then you go to bookmarks, whereas in iOS 6, you just press bookmarks and there you go. So speaking of which, let's actually just go to pocketnow.com and see how these browsers display the page perhaps a little bit differently. Okay, go at the same time, although this is not a speed test necessarily uh, because these have very different internals and we're just comparing the kind of experiences of the operating system. So here we go. Uh, they're coming through, and if it matters, uh, the iPhone 5 finished first. We found the iPhone 5 so far to beat out every device we've tested this against, even the quad-core Galaxy S3, so that is uh, very impressive. Okay, they're both done. You get a similar browsing experience. In typical iOS fashion, the scrolling is a little bit notchy, a little bit slower. In other words, in Jelly Bean, you can do one flick, go all the way to the bottom, all the way to the top. That's just not really possible in iOS 6. So we zoom in, zoom in, let's let go. It clears up faster here in iOS 6. And let's check out how landscape looks. So here we are on landscape. We both get pretty full screen views here. There's an option to hide the, uh, the status bar at the top of the screen, but in iOS 6 now, you have this full screen view, except for when you get to the top of the screen, then you actually see the information there. Something they didn't do in iOS 6, which is frustrating, is that they didn't combine the URL bar with the search bar. They still have it over here, and in Android, 
this top bar doubles as a search bar, so you don't have to choose between whether you want to put a search here uh, or just put it in the generic URL bar. So very good web browsing performance in both. Jelly Bean has made huge strides in making the device devices that run the operating system feel a lot faster, and they certainly succeeded uh, in doing so. Finally, let's compare voice services. We have Google Now with Jelly Bean, and we've got Siri with iOS 6. They're different because Google Now actually goes a step further by suggesting things for you. It'll tell you how long it'll take to drive back home. Before you drive back home, it'll start to remember where you live, where you work. It can bring up relevant context sensitive information, which is great. Siri is just something that you have to initiate uh, for it to do anything, but let's test it out. What's the weather going to be tomorrow? The forecast for media tomorrow is 66 degrees and clear. It should be nice tomorrow. Up okay, to faster degrees. here on the Galaxy Nexus in that case. We get a multi-day forecast in both cases, which is nice. Let's, uh, let's ask it something else. Set alarm for 7 a.m. tomorrow. So our alarms and reminders only support time of day, but not dates. Okay, so there's a limitation. Let's do something else. What's 4,000 divided by 286? The answer is 13.99. All right, Android got it faster. Seems that uh, iOS 6 is, is having a little trouble here. Overall, Google Now is a lot more responsive and more consistent than Siri. It seems to always work. And not only does it always work, but you can speak really fast and it converts it extremely quickly. Uh, it looks like a total Siri fail here. We're not even going to let it finish, so we're just going to stop it where it is. And let's do one more test. How old is Mitt Romney? Mitt Romney is 65 years old. Beautiful. I found this. Nice little picture. His date of birth over here in iOS 6. We get kind of a printout from Wolfram Alpha. It still tells you how old he is, right? Yep, 65 years, 6 months, and 11 days, and it was a little bit slower. Uh, but there are obviously limitations to what Google Now can do, like it cannot access certain part of your phones like Siri can. So both of these operating systems are very different. It would seem that Android is more progressive. Uh, it, it helps you in a lot of ways get things done more quickly with fewer steps. Whereas iOS 6 is what you see, what you get. Uh, it is familiar, it is stable, it is reliable, which is not to say that Android is not reliable. In fact, with Jelly Bean, something dramatic has changed. Uh, Jelly Bean suddenly has brought uh, the operating system to the level of the reliability and the smoothness of iOS, dare I say that. Uh, so it's, it's, it's getting very close in terms of which operating system provides the smoothest, best, most reliable experience. It's just a matter of how much you want to customize and how much you want to live in different ecosystems versus just Apple's ecosystem. So really it's up to you. If there are particular features that you want us to compare of these two great operating systems, uh, let us know in the comments and we'll do our best to put up a follow-up video. Please give us a thumbs up for this video if you liked it, and thanks for watching. That's it for now.